Hey everyone, welcome back to Talk Tech with Tiff. Today I sat down with Melissa, who is the co-founder of the app Pock Pock. We got into what it was really like transitioning from working a nine to five into co-founding a company, what an app really entails to find users and how to go about that, some of the challenges it brings and so much more. This was a very valuable conversation and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I do. Also, I have linked down below my newsletter, which contains unique discount codes, uh, career tips, coding tips, and so much more. So make sure to go sign up for it. Okay, let's get started. Welcome to my new series called Talk Tech with Tip, where I am sitting down with industry professionals to hear about their career journeys and current roles. I created this series to hear from people who are established in the tech industry so that we can all learn what these individuals do in their day-to-day -day jobs and the type of opportunities that are out there. Okay, let's get started. Hi, Melissa. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. I can't complain. It's a gorgeous Saturday, so it's always nice. It is. It's a beautiful day. Well, I was really excited to sit down and speak with you, especially about your company, Pock Pock. But before we get into it, tell me a little bit about yourself and your background. Sure. Yeah. Thank you for having me again. So my background's kind of crazy. Um, I love that. <laughs> I, I fell into tech in, in a very serendipitous way. And my career started in Germany, actually, where I used to live. And I was working at a small fashion startup there when I met a woman at a bus stop and then ended up working at the Walt Disney Company. So what? yeah, I, amazing. I spent a, a good chunk of my career at Disney as a product designer for baby and toddler products, mm -hmm. um, not in the tech space, but in the physical product space. And then I moved back to Toronto and got into tech. I, um, I started working at a startup here in marketing and then ended up um, starting Pock Pock after that. So it's been kind of a whirlwind. I've had many different types of jobs. <laughs> I think that's always the best though, because through each one, you gain so much experience. Absolutely. Going back to, I love how you two just like, it was so casual, like, and then I just started a company and, you know, Pock Pock and it's doing great. And, <laughs> but what was it kind of taking a step? Well, actually, before I ask you that, let's talk a little bit about, for those who aren't familiar with Pock Pock, what it is. Sure. Yes. <laughs> That's probably pretty important. Yeah. So um, Pock Pock is an ed tech startup based here in Toronto, and we're really on a mission to help raise the next generation of kids to be like creative, out of the box thinkers through digital play. So um, our first product is called Pock Pock Playroom. It's a preschool app for kids two to six years old, and it's essentially just a digital playroom filled with open-ended toys that spark imagination and creativity and learning through open-ended play. Wow, that's amazing. How did, how did this, I mean, how did this concept uh, or idea initially be come to you? So I, I can't take full credit, to be honest. So my co-founder, Esther, and her husband, Mateus, they had just given birth to their second son and already had a two-year-old at home. And they were starting to look around for technological options for their two-year-old to play with that would be not only entertaining and stimulating, but also really educational and self-guided because yeah. they, they thought, you know, if we're going to give our child screen time, we want it to be a moment that we can take for ourselves as parents and not have to sit there and be part of it. And when they started looking around on the app store, they found nothing other than very highly overstimulating and addictive video games that weren't really designed properly for young kids or more pedagogical style apps that are really focused on having kids memorize and regurgitate information like uh. the ABCs, the one, two, threes, and all those things that are very valuable. But um, there was this huge missing piece in the middle, which is what about creative learning? What about mm -hmm. imagination and empowering kids to think outside of the box and problem solve and develop social emotional skills and kind of all that awesome stuff that happens like on the floor of a messy playroom in your house? Why didn't that exist in a digital space? And so they started creating something on their own on the weekends, which was going to be a digital storybook with no language. So okay. um, just like some images that you could tap and they would animate and make a sound. And that's when I had the pleasure of meeting them. And we started talking a lot more about this sort of big problem that they had in their own household and putting that into a bigger context of how you know, our kids are going to grow up to have jobs that haven't even been invented yet. Yeah. And so many of the jobs that say you and I have today could be taken over by AI exactly. or other types of tech. So we yeah. were like, how do we equip our kids for the future? And there's so many important skills that kids will learn in the classroom, but we really wanted to focus on those life skills because mm -hmm. technology right now can't think creatively. So that's yeah. something that's innately human. We want to really focus on fostering. So we decided to start the company to really try to do that. So 
bring technology into children's lives in a really mindful and healthy way, but with the intention of really sparking their creative thinking. I love that. And and like you said, it was such a gap in the market prior to Pock Pock coming around that uh, it's amazing to see how, how quickly it's just taken on like you know I know congratulations by the way I know you just raised three million dollars to continue to expand so that's thank you huge <laughs> going back to your early days uh you mentioned prior to Puck Puck you were working for a company here what was it like it's scary leaving you know that comfort and and having that job what was it like that transition for you it's a good question. I think I grew up in a very entrepreneurial household, and my brother is the co-founder of Snowman, which is a another Toronto-based <laughs> creative studio. Yeah. So the apple doesn't fall far. Nice. <laughs> but um, so I, I definitely was afraid, but I knew that you know, at first of all, I saw my brother could do it. So I was like, if he could do it, I could do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're very competitive. Um, no, but more seriously, I think you know it's it's terrifying because not only do you lose the comfort of of a, of a stable job, but you also take on the weight of, of a company. And I think that's something that, you know, you, you, you can't just get away from. So I knew that it was going to be not only transitioning my entire day to day in terms of what I was doing for my job, but also my life. So just thinking about a nine to five job, like that doesn't exist for me anymore. And I do, I, I don't stop thinking about Pock Pock. It's yeah. like for better or for worse. Yeah, yeah. So I think that was a big scary thing was to really accept like, okay, this is now my job is going to become my life. Whereas before my job was just part of my life. And um, there's no company I'd rather do that with than Pock Pock because it's something I'm really passionate about. But I think starting your own company, um, it's no joke in the sense that like it's going to take over your life probably in many ways, at least at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And while work-life balance is super important to me and I try my best to to, to stay healthy in that sense, um, yeah, it's hard to get away from. So it was it was scary. But yeah, yeah. So far, so good. <laughs> exactly. And it's one of those things that you have to, if you're making that leap, you really have to believe in and be passionate about what you're doing. Because like you said, it's your whole life, especially at the beginning. It is, absolutely. And, and there's also the learning curve of going from doing one job in a company and being part of a, a bigger organization and being somewhat of a cog in a machine yeah. to building that machine. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a very different skill set and, and just takes a lot of, a lot of um, resilience, I think, because you fail so much. Yes. So it's a lot of um, you know, support is really important. Kind of speaking about that with failure and finding support, did you have moments, especially when you were starting out, but when you're like, I'm not able to do this, I'm not equipped to do this, like kind of almost imposter syndrome? And how did you navigate that? Oh, of course. <laughs> I think people who, who say that they don't have that are lying. <laughs> I, I don't agree, know. I agree. Um, yeah, absolutely. There's so many things that I've done for the very first time with Pock Pock. So I had a lot of moments where I was um, wavering and wondering, like, can I really do this? And what if I screw up? Or it's not just me. I have a whole team of people. And we, Aster and I, and like all of our co-founders, we really care a lot about them. So it's a lot of responsibility to make sure that they're also happy. And I think that that's, um, that's just a big deal. And how do I overcome it? Resilience. Like my, I learned many years ago that nobody really knows what they're doing in life and everyone's kind of faking it until they make it. So I just looked around and was like, okay, if that person can do it, I can do it. Why, why not? What's the difference? Like there literally is no difference. I'm the only one getting in my way. Cause if a friend came to me or my brother came and said, Hey, like I'm not sure I can do this. or we're having challenges with the business. Um, it would be a no brainer for me to be like, of course you can do this. Like, why can't you? You're the perfect person to do it. So I really just started to look in the mirror and realize like, give like take your own advice Melissa yes, yes. <laughs> and some days it's easier to do that than others but having a good support system is really crucial and I'm very lucky to have amazing co-founders who um you know we were there for each other we we try not to you know have our meltdowns at the same time yeah. <laughs> no I'm just joking but scheduled yeah. in like my meltdowns on Monday yours can be on Tuesday <laughs> yes <laughs> no just trying to be there for each other yeah. and and frankly we haven't had a lot of crises we're very lucky to um you know be heading on the right path. So that's great. I, I completely resonate when you said, if they can do this, why can't I? Cause that's been my, my motto in my, my head throughout all my journey as well. And it's so true. I always just think, well, why can't I do it then? You know, and it really helps break it down, um, in a less intimidating way. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. <laughs> I think we have a tendency as humans to assume that everybody else in the room is really confident and knows, knows 
what they're doing and feels good in their own skin and is really well equipped for whatever task is at hand. But I think you'll find that that's not generally the case mm-hmm. in, in, in every situation. It's so true. And so, um, yeah, it's reassuring to know that other people have doubts and concerns and feelings like that. And just remembering, you know, you're not in it alone. Like, yeah. let's just try to help each other out. <laughs> figure, figure it out together. Yeah, exactly. Going back to the early days of Poc Poc, what were some of the biggest challenges? For me, and maybe this isn't one, but for me, when I think of... Uh, apps, I think finding users would be a very big challenge. Was that one of them or what were some of the biggest ones? Yeah, finding users is definitely not easy, especially for us because our user is not our customer. So (laughs) our users are two to six year olds, so we don't advertise to them. And frankly, we can't really speak to them directly Mm -hmm. in most situations. So we're talking to the parents of our customers. And that has been a really cool and interesting challenge for us. When we launched, we didn't do any marketing. We just did PR, which I just did on my own. And um, we were only now starting to invest in marketing a year after launch. And so visibility on the app store is a huge factor in the success of an app. And so we're very lucky that Apple likes Pock Pock. <laughs> um, we won an Apple Design Award last June, Congrats. which, um, thank you, which was incredible and insane. And that really helped boost our visibility on the app store because once you're in an Apple Design Award winner, you are bundled into a lot of features and and different like lists and groups and you get a lot of press and all of that really helped kind of push us forward because it was just two weeks after we'd launched. Wow. So that was a huge help for us. And then I would say also just balancing out the needs of the kids with the needs of the business. Mm -hmm. So for us, like our number one priority is how do we serve kids best? Yes. If that means our company is going to go under, then it's going to go under because like we, we care so much about the kids and we want to make sure we're not cutting corners and we're building the business for them. Mm -hmm. But we also have a team that we have to pay. We have an office we have to pay rent for. And, and frankly, we're, we're here to make money as well. So I think just always keeping that in check and making sure that our creative decisions come first, but that the business follows very close behind and that we're doing things at, um, that are going to set us up for success in the future because ultimately we want to stick around for a long time. And our whole mission is to become like the Pixar of play. And to do that, we need time. Yeah. So to, to get time, we need money. <laughs> and yes. to get money, we need users. So it's, it's a very um, cyclical process. And yeah. so that's always been a little bit of a challenge is balancing those two things. But um, I think so far we've been doing a really good job and we've been super fortunate that families love Pock Pock so much because screen time, as you know, <laughs> is uh, a tricky subject in it many is, households, yeah. totally understandably. And as a parent myself, like I completely understand why. Um, but, you know, for us seeing that parents don't feel guilty about screen time and are actually evangelizing Pock Pock for us among their friends and other parent communities, that's huge. And it so is. that's been a really big help for us in terms of growing. That is. And to really have this past year not done, to just do more of the PR side, but not even done the official marketing side, as you said, like, I can't even imagine what the next six months, next year is going to look for Pock Pock. Thank you. I hope so. <laughs> we have some amazing new folks on the team who are very busy um, trying to, to help really focus on these areas now, which we're, we're super excited for because the more people we have playing Pock Pock, the more feedback we get and the better the product gets. So that that's a really important detail as well. It is. And it's an interesting challenge uh, or interesting thing you mentioned about you're not marketing, of course, to your end user. I never thought of that before, but that's such an interesting thing to navigate, really. It is. <laughs> it's very it's very fun and very unique for mm-hmm. sure. And it gives us a lot of cool opportunities because on the one hand, like we, we want to talk to the kids as much as we can because toddlers don't lie. Like if, yeah. if, the, if you hand them a toy to test and they don't like it, they're just going to hand the iPad back to you and be like, I hate this. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> or they might not even say anything. They'll just walk away and go place with some Lego. Um, and so that tells us so, so much. So we want to always try to get through the path to them and we have to go through their parents, of course. And they're the one paying for Pock Pock. So we need to make sure that they're feeling comfortable with it and they feel the, that there's value in there for their child. Yeah. So it's really fun. We get to talk to a lot of awesome families. That's amazing. And like you said, it's it. you talk to one family and they, they start using it. They love it. Then it's word of mouth. It just trickles, really. It's trickling, yes. Yeah, <laughs> very quickly. I'm sure there is so much uh, ahead. I know there's so much ahead for Pock Pock, but is there uh, things that are ahead that you can share with us today? 
Yeah, so we're going to be continuing to update the playroom very regularly, which we already do about every four to six weeks. Um, Pock Pock Playroom is a subscription, so we want to make sure that there's a ton of value there. And also for kids, you know, they're never, they never stop being curious. So we want to make sure that there's always something new to discover. So that's a really um, exciting part of what's to come. We have a lot of new updates coming. I can share that we have, well, actually one next week, which is um, a marble run, which I think is a really awesome sort of STEM-focused toy. We spent a lot of time actually here at the Ontario Science Centre oh. uh, doing research because there's a life-size, massive marble machine. I don't know if you've ever been there. No, I haven't seen this. You definitely have to go. It's amazing. Um and then we're doing a big space update later this year. And we have a lot of what we're creating comes from the user. So they'll ask for something and then we try to think about how we can bring that into the playroom. And then playroom aside, you know, we're really starting to think about how we continue to develop innovative digital toys for older kids as well. Because when the kids turn six or seven and they start to age out of playroom, we want to be there to bring them an experience that's just as open-ended and creative and empowering as the playroom, but with a little bit more depth and challenge because they'll be a little bit older. So um, we're starting to think about those next products as well, which will also all be app-based. So it's a little kind of sneak peek as to what might be to come. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, just trying to get Pock Pock in the hands of more families, I think is a really big focus for us because we haven't really spent a lot of time doing that. We've really been product obsessed for the last couple of years and spent the first year post-launch really focusing on that. So lots to come. Lots to come. It's very exciting things. I I could, I feel like I could sit with you for a long time, continuing to ask you questions around Pock Pock and your journey because it's just so inspiring. But to, to really end the conversation, I ask this to everyone, which is what advice would you give to your younger self? <laughs> it's a really good question. I asked this to my husband this morning, actually, and he had a good answer too. But I would say that I would tell myself to stop worrying and really just let what everybody else thinks go and just follow your gut. Because there have been so many times in my career and in my life where I've been too concerned with how I'm perceived or too concerned with um, if what I'm doing feels right and if I should trust my instincts but I've learned like just screw it just do whatever you want life is short and you have to trust yourself because you're the only one who knows you the best so I think that's a huge thing and then also just to remember that um you know like like we were talking about before that everybody is going through something and everybody's trying their best. And if you feel like shit one day, I don't know if I can say that, you might have to bleep me out. <laughs> no, we're good. Um, but if you feel like crap one day, you can remember like everybody has bad days and don't let that get you down and yeah. just follow your heart because we spend most of our lives working. So you have to love what you do. I totally agree. I feel like I really needed all that advice personally right now. So thank you. <laughs> Melissa, it was so great sitting down today to chat with you about Pock Pock and your journey. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. It was such a pleasure. Thank you. (laughs) Amazing. Cool.